Hello, welcome back. I'm excited for this video because we're going to be talking about how can we support someone in our life who is going through a tough time, who's like going through a bit of a rough patch, whether that be a friend, a colleague, a family member. How can we just support that person so that they feel heard, they feel seen, and they feel like, you know, it's someone's in my corner. Someone cares about me. Like be their Rocky to their Adonis Creed, their Gandalf to their Frodo, their Hagrid to Harry, Dumbledore to Harry, like wherever, whatever example you want to use, right? How do we just make sure that this person feels like someone cares about them, right? That's at the end of the day, that's, that's like the main goal here because I'm sure we've been in conversations where this other person that we're having a conversation with shares something quite vulnerable and like they're opening up to us. Maybe there's a bit of emotion, right? Maybe there's a little bit of heaviness as well. And sometimes, and I'm sure you might've felt this, like we've felt useless. We felt like we've had no idea what to do or what to say. And we just leave that conversation, feel like, man, did I even help this person at all? Like, did I do anything for them? Like leaving a conversation like that, it's tough. It's like, it sucks. It's like, man, crap. Am I just not a good person? Am I not a good friend? Like, I don't want you thinking like this. All I wanna share with you is just seven things that you can use just so we can make sure that that person feels like someone cares about them. Number one, create a safe environment. To have deep, vulnerable conversations where someone is sharing part of their story, like it is super important that the environment is safe, that it is conducive to have these types of conversations. You don't, you don't wanna have them in a place that where that person feels uncomfortable, right? And if you need to move, make sure you move. Some people also like to have these conversations while they are moving. Like I know one of my really good mates, we like to have a walk when we have these type of conversations. Some people like to have it in a coffee shop. Some people like me like to just sit down and have a cup of tea. Like that's kind of my, my kind of vibe that I prefer to kind of go with. You can like many different type of contexts or environments, or you can just like a couple of like a few, but just make sure that that person that you're hearing from that is sharing their story quite, quite vulnerably is just make sure that they are feeling comfortable and they are feeling safe. Number two, Recognize it is a privilege. It is super important to recognize that you are in a privileged position to hear this person share their story because they don't share it with everyone. They may not trust other people, but they're choosing to trust you. In fact, you know what? They may not even choose to be trusting you. They just like, they're just taking the leap of faith, right? And putting their trust in you anyway, right? Because they want to get it off their chest or whatever it is, right? So just recognize that if you're hearing these types of stories and someone's sharing something with you, that it is it is a privilege to be, to be in that space, right? It is an honor to hear their story. It helps us feel humble and compassionate so that we understand them a little bit better. And it also helps us to do number three, which is practice active listening. Active listening involves obviously paying attention to what that person is sharing with you, but it also involves, you know, asking clarifying question. What do you mean by this? Right. And repeating back to them what they have mentioned so that they know that you've understood correctly. When you do things like this, it makes that person feel heard, validated and understood. And more often than not, when these people are like having these conversations with you, they just want you to listen. They don't want you to give advice. Like, so if you can just sit there and just listen, reflect back to them what they are saying, like just really just be in that space with them and just allow them just to share what's going on. Oh my gosh. Right, that is like pretty much what essentially what you need to do. That is your role in that situation. Number four, avoid judgment. Try not to pass judgment on things that they are saying because your job in that moment is not to judge. It's to acknowledge the feelings or the experience that they are having. You don't have to agree with it. You just have to kind of be there just to listen to it. If they ask for your opinion or your advice, then you're more than welcome to then. But other than that, just listen carefully without any judgment. Number five, show empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings that that other person is going through. One way I like to do this is I like to imagine what life must be like giving what they are going through. Like that just kind of helps me put my mind into their shoes. So I have a rough idea of, of, of what are some of the things that I might be feeling. And then I can really add that back to them. I can, I can acknowledge that, hey, that must be really tough. Right, well, that must be that must be really difficult to go through, right? Like I can then relay that back to them. When you do this, once again, it's just helping them feel like they are being understood. And you know what's really interesting? It's like if you're going through the same thing, like it's probably it's one of the best things that you can hear. Like, not that it's great that you're going through a tough time, but like if that person knows that you're that you know pretty much exactly what they're feeling like in a similar way 
then it's like, man, I'm so glad that I'm not alone in this situation. By the way, showing empathy can actually take a lot of energy, like a lot of emotional energy, because you're also sometimes feeling what they are saying, which understandably, you know, that's what happens generally when you have these type of conversations. And some people can feel very drained by it. Some people feel very energized by it. It's just like, just be aware of your energy and how much you have of it. And if it means that you need to stop or you need to pause and you move on, you need, you need to grab some water, then it means that you need to ha you need to do what you need to do to look after yourself to continue the conversation. Number six, offer support and resources. Now, obviously, depending on the situation, your friend might need a little bit of extra support from a therapist, a psychologist, a counselor, whatever it is, whoever it is. You may not be the right person to be able to help this person out, right? And if you feel like they need a little bit of extra help, make sure you offer up the right resources if you need a little bit of like guidance into what resources just have a look at the description of this video i'll have a list there of different type of um resources that you can use obviously based in australia and you'll have one based on your country wherever you are watching this but it's super important that you don't take on the role and the responsibility of like being this person's therapist like whatever you do don't don't be doing that unless you're qualified obviously right but it's like it's not, it's not a realm that you necessarily want to navigate. You might be coming out of a really good space that you really want to help this person, but please do not do that if you're not trained or if you don't have the qualifications for it. And lastly, number seven, check in regularly. Following up with that person that is going through a tough time and just showing ongoing support can be one of the best things that you can do. It can be a simple message like, hey, how you been since the last time we spoke? Right, like a simple message like that. Sometimes they're not going to share anything. They might just they might just say good, but really they're just they're having it tough. It's just like it's more about do they know that you're there? Like if you're in the background, like do they know that you are there? More often than not, that is enough. So that is it, my friends. Just remember that everyone's experience is unique. So just be aware and as you become more emotionally intelligent and you develop these skills, you'll get better at picking how do you best support this person with whatever techniques that I've shared with you or that you've listened and learned and you've heard elsewhere. By the way, if you have like any ideas on how to support people that are going through a tough time, make sure you mention it in the comments of this video. I'd love to hear them. Other than that, make sure you like the video. Send this to someone that you feel like, you know, could use some of these skills because they haven't supported you well in the past. <clears throat> I'm kidding. Just send it to someone that you feel like could find this quite helpful. Other than that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Catch you later. Bye.